As a miniatures painter, you usually have hills and plateaus in your painting skill. You go along for a while and you've got a pretty flat line and then all of a sudden you figure out a new technique or you figure out something or your skill just gets generally better and then you move up some to another plateau and you move along that line for a while and then eventually hopefully you keep moving up and hopefully you don't go back down. But for me, something that was definitely or just rocket shot up in my painting skill from the plateau that I had been on previously was using a wet palette. Now for years I had heard you shouldn't paint straight out of the pot. You just shouldn't do it. Okay? And I always thought it was because people were telling me don't paint out of the pot because you shouldn't use a straight color. You should always mix your colors. I come from an art school background so when you're using a palette in art school and this is like the normal standard palette you think of when you see stereotypical you know, painter guy up against a canvas, you get your thumb through the hole and it's a big round thing and you're mixing your paints and stuff like that. You never used a color straight out because you were always mixing things and mixing and mixing. So I thought, well, why do they make so many colors for miniature painting if I'm supposed to mix them anyway? The trick was is that what I didn't understand, people were not telling me don't ever use your paints straight out of the pot because you should always mix and try to find a different color. They were telling me that because if you take your paint straight out of the pot, put it directly onto the miniature, it has a tendency to make the miniature look gloppy, chalky. You want your miniatures to not look painted. You want them to be painted, obviously, but you don't want them to look like they have paint on them. You want them to look like that's the color they're supposed to be. If you can see the paint, if you can see the surface of it, the globbiness, if it's filling in details, you don't want that. You want something that's a smoother, cleaner, thinner paint that you put on. It might take a little bit longer, but it looks always much nicer. So once I got that figured out, that that's what I was supposed to be doing, I took uh, like a plastic plate and I would take some paint out of the pot and then I would put it on the plate and I'd take a little bit of water and I'd thin it down and I would start painting. And you'd paint then you go back, get some more paint in your brush, and you go back and forth like that for a bit. And after about a minute, your paint was dry because you've thinned it, the water's evaporated, and you now have a dry or at best tacky paint with like a little skin on it, which is gross. So it wasn't until I was talking to a good friend of mine um, who's an award-winning painter and a hell of a towel salesman, by the way. He can sell some towel like nobody's business. Towel for sale! Sam taught me to use something called a wet palette. I had been using a plastic plate, which was basically acting as my palette but if you use a wet palette, it will keep your acrylic paints wetter longer. So you can keep going back, you can keep going back. You build it right, you can go back two days, three days, four days later. That paint's still wet, you can still, you just add a little bit of water to it, it'll break up a little bit of the tackiness, and then you've got yourself basically something that will allow you to make your paints very thin, yet not too thin, and they won't dry out so quickly. So where does one get a wet palette? Okay, so if you live in a really big city, um, you, like, I mean, like a million people in this city, you might be able to find an art supply store that will be able to have those in stock or possibly be able to order them. They're very rare, the wet palette. Um, no, I'm kidding. Um, this is what I use for my wet palette. This is a, a Glad sandwich box. This is what you take your sandwich to work in. And uh, this is the basis for my wet palette. All you need is a box that is airtight and preferably watertight. I don't know that you can be watertight without being airtight or vice versa. I should talk to somebody about that. Anyway, my point is this is the thing that I carry around with me if I go paint at somebody else's house or if I go to my local shop. I take this thing with me. It sits on my table when I paint. It's always here. And this is really all you need. This is the grocery store. Uh, Glad makes these. Um, usually grocery store brands also make these things. It's pretty shallow. You can kind of see here. Um, it is just a simple blue box and uh, there's not much to it. It's just basically uh, clear plastic. It's got a decent seal to it. Lid comes off and everything like that. It's pretty much it. So, how do you make a wet palette? Well, you could just pour some water in there. That won't work. Tried that, didn't work. What you need 
is this stuff. This is called paper towel. Maybe you've heard of it. It's pretty simple. Everybody's got it. You take yourself a big piece. This is the kind where you can rip it off in little half pieces, but I don't. I'm just going to use it like this. You take a normal piece, you fold it in half, and then you fold it into a quarter. And you get yourself a nice, soft, kind of spongy layer, and this is going to hold the water. Okay. Take this, and you're going to take it and just kind of squish it into your sandwich box thing, holder, container. Okay? So, paper towel. It's right in there. That's all you got to do. I'm trying out second camera, so we'll see how this works. I needed maybe a different lens or something, but right now you can see it's in there, and this is uh, pretty much step one, sticking it in there. Now, here comes step two. This is a little bit more difficult, I'm not going to lie to you. There's something called, I don't know if you can see this, parchment paper. This is made by Reynolds, I think. You can usually get this in your grocery store, uh, in the baking section, like by the flour and the sugar and that kind of jazz, and the you know, birthday candles and all that jazz. This is called baking parchment. Wax paper will not work. Wax paper is a totally different thing, so this is what you need, baking parchment. You take a piece of that, which I have pre-cut. Um, it's a little bit waxy, but it's also porous, so that's important. If you were to just start putting paint on top of the paper towel in here, that's not going to work out. That's going to work really terribly, as a matter of fact. But um, if you put this on top of it, the water will sort of seep through the parchment paper enough to keep your paints hydrated, but usually the paint won't soak back through too much and start to make your um, nice white paper towel too weird. Now, if paint does get on the paper towel, it will wick through. And sometimes if it's green paint, you will think, oh my god, I have grown a horrible, hor horrible mold. But that's not actually the case. It just means that the, uh, the paint got into the water that's being held in the paper towel and then just spread out like crazy. So don't believe that you've started some sort of horrible biohazard thing. All right, so to finish this up real quick, um, there doesn't seem to be a specific side to the paper towel. Or, I'm sorry, to the parchment. I usually put it curly side down because then that kind of acts against... It kind of holds it in better, I find. If you put it curly side up, it just... Whoosh, but if you put it so the curly side is down, then it's going to stay in there because the next step, once you kind of get it squished in there, it's set, it's a little bit of water. And you take it and you just pour it. Okay? You just pour it in there and you let it go to the edges because you don't really want the water on the top. You want a little bit. You want some beads because that helps you for mixing, but you mainly want the water to soak down into all the edges. So now your paper towel is what's wet. So you just kind of soak it around, get it in there, it gets to the edges, and now Okay, I've poured a good amount of water in there. This is, this is my magic trick. So I'm doing this, it's not coming out. So I'll do a little bit more. It takes a little while to figure out how much you actually need, but once you get it in there and you kind of get it in, you can also recharge it. After two, three, four weeks of this being sealed at night when you're not painting or whatever, it'll start to get a little bit drier in there. You can pour a little bit back in and it's fine. It just sort of recharges it a little bit. So. That's pretty much it. Um, seal it when you're not using it. Now it's nice and airtight. And honestly, all you do is you dab into the paint a little bit. You take that glob of paint with your brush and you put it onto the, the paper. Just dab it in there. And then you take a little bit of water and then you dab it in there. And um, you can kind of see, I think, you can see there's that it's, the liquid is sort of holding it down and you've got a little bit of uh, you know, surface tension there. I'm going to add just a little bit more water. But it's nice sometimes to have a couple of little just, just extra droplets floating around in there so that sometimes instead of having to go back to your cup, you can just go right back to a little drop of water on there. Um, some people will even use 
some flow extenders, which are um, basically art supplies for, uh, Liquitex makes a bunch of them. Um, a lot of different paint manufacturers make these things called flow extenders, and they're basically like a thinner almost for um, acrylic paints, but not quite. It doesn't so much thin it as it just makes it flow a little better and spread out a little bit better. There's also, um, I believe, something called retardant, liquid retardant, which also helps it to not dry so quickly. So if you want to do some more mixing and stuff like that. This is also a perfect um, vehicle for you if you've already done, let's say you've painted something in a specific ultramarine blue, something along those lines, and now you want to highlight. If you don't have a particular color, you know, that well now I'm going to use sky blue, you just have your ultramarine blue, and now you want to do that, you can add a little bit of white to it and use a palette like you're supposed to, where you're actually mixing colors. Put a little blue over here, and put a little white over here, and then just sort of wiggle your brush back and forth between the two, and then you will get a lighter color, which you can then do your highlighting or your dry brushing or whatever the deal is. Dry brushing, actually, in general, it's better to still go straight from the paint pot with your dry brush because you want your paint to be a little tacky. Dry brushing from here is sometimes a bit more difficult because the paint is so much more fluid. With dry brushing, you want the paint to be a little more tacky. But this is, seriously, this has helped my painting so much, I cannot even explain. It is, uh, I use it all the time. I can't paint without it, honestly. And it costs nearly nothing. Um, I mean, really. It's something you get from the grocery store. It's some paper towel you've already got. Uh, it's a plastic box and uh, some water. If you're not using a palette like this now, some sort of wet palette, you really, really, really ought to think about it because it really, really helps your paint to look like it's the color that the miniature was supposed to be and not this is some miniature with a glob of paint on it. This will really, really help your game and uh, your painting game. So try it. It's not going to cost you much. Give it a try. Go out, find yourself a sandwich box thingy like this, Glad, whatever brand. Um, find yourself some parchment paper. If you know you or a loved one bakes, you probably have some in your house. I had to go find some. My wife ba bakes, but she doesn't usually use parchment paper, so I had to go find some. Paper towel. Everywhere you can find it. This will last you for a really long time. And it will really, really, I cannot stress this enough, make your painting better.